everyone, Ivy here. Today I want to talk about my latest project, which is going to be an 1895 tea gown. Tea gowns are one of the more mysterious historical garments that I've come across in my research. And at first I had quite a lot of trouble figuring out exactly what they were, when they were worn, and what they were for. Tea gowns are kind of a strange middle ground. They're not meant to be worn outside the house, but they're also not strictly only meant to be seen by family and staff. So a tea gown is kind of a transitional garment. Uh, they're appropriate to be worn in the afternoon, and it's also okay to wear them around family and close friends. So these gowns, which eventually were worn all the way into the evening, are considered appropriate to be seen in. During my research, I've discovered that tea gowns usually seem to come in two parts. So there's an overgown and an undergown. The undergown, to me, looks a lot like a nightgown, but like a really fancy one. And then same with the overgown, it looks a lot like a dressing gown or a robe. So they are loose, comfortable, and meant to be worn without a corset, which also makes it kind of a unique garment, since normally you wouldn't be seen around company without all of the proper undergarments. I have to admit that actually I'm not right at the beginning of this project. I've actually been working on it for a few days now. The first thing that I decided to do was make a little sample piece. And I wish that you could feel this in person because it just feels so luxurious. I think it looks really beautiful and I'm pretty excited with how this little sample piece of soutache came out. All right, so let's take a look at the pieces that I've already ended up cutting out. So an unfortunate reality of being a self-taught seamstress is that I actually have no idea how to draw patterns. So what I did here was I took an existing truly Victorian pattern, and this one happens to be the French vest bodice, which is an old faithful for me. I feel like I use it all the time. I took that pattern and I went ahead and just made it really, really long and added a train to the pieces. So essentially I accomplished this just by using a yardstick and a giant roll of brown construction paper and I just extended those natural lines the way that they would have ended up if they had continued on. Um, the big problem that I'm running into now is that I have cleaned out the black velvet from every single Joann's in the Seattle area. So I have two thirds of a gown and I do not know if I'm going to have enough for the rest. My plan is to perhaps try and piece it because of course piecing is period, but if that doesn't work out, I'm gonna have to drive a city over and see if I can find a little bit more of this black velvet fabric. I have been running into some issues other than just the piecing issue, which is that velvet is incredibly difficult to work with when you're dealing with soutache. I've been running into a lot of speed bumps, which is kind of annoying. So um, I think I might set this aside. So basically what happened was, I, I think what ended up happening and why I set that project aside, probably never to be seen again, is that I realized that the nape on some of the velvet had been reversed and it really just didn't look very good. And also I realized that I bit off a little bit more than I could chew with this soutache. Not only is it a ridiculous amount of soutache because the train is so long, but also because the garment is so large, it's really hard to actually maneuver it in the sewing machine in order to apply the soutache. So I honestly just kind of found myself hating the project completely. And so, uh, yeah, I guess I just started over. Now that I actually have a place to wear this garment, since my awesome friend Inky of the channel Inky Soupy, please go check her out, she's amazing. Since my awesome friend invited me over to do a Valentine's Day tea, I decided to start this project over completely and I picked fabric that I had out of my stash. So much of what I decided to do is staying the same. I had already drafted that pattern using the truly Victorian French vest bodice as a starting point and I didn't make any additional changes to it. So I'll show you what I have on the overdress so far and then I think I'm going to go ahead and get started on the undergown. So this is what the overgown looks like so far. It has a really long train on it which was actually really typical for the time. Even though it's loungewear, these tea gowns are actually kind of ridiculously fancy. So I'm thinking that the front of this gown is just going to hang open and loose like this, which is pretty common. And then the undergown will like have its own sleeve that hangs out from this one. Unfortunately, I did have to do a little bit of piecing for this project. Fortunately, I only had to do it on one of the panels, but I did have to do it twice in two spots. So you can see that there's kind of an odd seam right here and then another weird one right here. 
I think I'm going to set this half of the project aside for right now and I am going to switch to working on the undergown. The undergown should be pretty simple because there's almost no fitting involved at all. I'm gonna use this yoke pattern, which honestly, I think I may originally have gotten from a simplicity pattern. And I'm just gonna have the rest of the gown hang down from the yoke. The only shaping in the garment will come from the belt that I intend to wear with it. I think the sleeve is gonna be the only even slightly complicated part because the puffy sleeve that I want to pair with it will require a fitted lining to help the outer sleeve keep its shape. The skirt of the underdress is pretty much just two big rectangles, one for the front of the dress and one for the back. I gather the rectangles and then stitch them down to the yoke. All right, so I am just now moving on to the sleeve and I think I have a pretty good plan here. So essentially what I did was I took the sleeve pattern from the Truly Victorian French Vest bodice and I'm basically going to use that as a lining to help this big sleeve stay up. So the plan is to like put one inside the other, kind of pull it up a little so it like drapes and then I'll use whatever is sticking out and basically try and make it look like a cuff. So I think that's going to work, hopefully. There's no reason it shouldn't. So I slipped the outer sleeve over the lining but decided to match the right sides together. That way when I flip the outer sleeve up to match the lining, I'll have a clean finish for the bottom of the outer sleeve. After that, all I really need to do to finish the sleeve is to attach it to the actual dress itself and decorate the cuffs. So I did the rest of the finishing off screen. I think I've talked about most of this. I did add buttons to the front so that I'd be able to get in and out of it. And then instead of a cuff, I decided to do a whole bunch of ruffles down at the bottom. And then the collar is very simple. It's literally just a piece of lace that has been folded down in the front to make like a V shape. And I can never resist trying out my new garments, so please enjoy this brief montage of me pretending to be spooky. That's enough of that. Let's get back down to business. At this stage, I think it's time for me to switch back to the overgown. And honestly, there's really not that much work left to do. In this shot, I'm finishing up the trim and I also have the lining and sleeves to do, but that's pretty much it. For some reason, I am really struggling with the trim on this and I just, I don't like it that much. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and try again, probably with some suit dash, Old Faithful. So I think that, generally speaking, this project went really well. The second half of this project went really well. The first half, perhaps less successful, but I'm really happy with how the pink overdress and the undergown came out. I think that what I love most about both of these garments is that they're actually honestly really easy to make, comparatively speaking. There's pretty much no fitting that you really have to do. It's okay to just eyeball the sizing. You don't have to do any kind of like major closures or anything like that. Honestly, I would definitely recommend this as a really good, impactful project that has a lot of visual appeal that is a lot easier. And the undergarments are so much simpler than they are for a lot of other Victorian garments. You don't even need a corset. Honestly, just a chemise and a petticoat are plenty for this particular outfit. And overall, I'm really happy with it. The fabric that I ended up using actually is upholstery fabric and I was worried that I would end up regretting it 
and I'm kind of surprised that I don't. It is a really heavy garment, so it's only going to ever really be suitable for the winter time, but it just feels so luxurious, and without a heavy sleeve made out of the upholstery fabric, it's honestly not too hot or anything like that. As far as things that I would do differently for next time, I really kind of feel like the belt didn't come out the way that I wanted it to. It's actually something that I already owned from a previous project, and it really, honestly, it needs boning in order to hold its structure, which it doesn't currently have. Otherwise, I had a really great time making this project. I'm really looking forward to wearing it to my Valentine's Day tea event with my friend Inky. She is in my COVID pods, and it's really nice to have an event to look forward to. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.